Oxfordshire to get fit in mind, body and soul. We hear from Scottish hymn writer John Bell about why singing together is such an important part of praise. And to prove his point, we'll be singing two of John Bell's hymns. Let's begin just a few miles from here at the Salvation Army's Training College with an uplifting hymn to chase away those January blues. Since the global financial crash of 2008, banking and finance have rarely been out of the news and often with very negative headlines. Unlike London's financial square mile, which has 50 odd churches, Canary Wharf doesn't have any, on land at least. When it was planned in the 1980s, it seems nobody thought about the spiritual needs of people working here. So, 11 years ago, a church was floated in. Hello, hello. Hi, pleased to meet you. Welcome, Marcus. This is it. This is it. This is our boat, our little Noah's Ark. St Peter's Barge, London's only floating church, was a creative solution to the problem of no church on the estate. And we're a church for the people who work in Canary Wharf and the people who live in the Docklands area as well. Certainly, I go to church on a Sunday, but uh, I commute in from quite a long distance, so I can't do that easily in the week. The strength of the mighty God defend you. The love of the everlasting... The Bible's got a lot to say about how those who are rich need to treat those who are less well off. And so those who are rich have a real responsibility to help the poor, to care for them. Amen. Jesus certainly hung out with rich people, uh, the financial people of his day, the tax collectors, who many other people didn't want to touch with a barge pole, if you'll excuse the pun. He spent a lot of time with them, but when they came to follow him, he would challenge them about what they did with their money. And in this room, there'll be some amazing achievements. But actually, all of that is secondary if we've neglected and ignored the one who should mean more to us than any other, 
a loving creator. Some of the values we learn are values like being good to your fellow man, being kind, uh, showing love to others. Um, you probably wouldn't hear the word love in the office much, but, <laughs> but you can still show love, like being considerate of others. Canary Wolf is such a great centre of commercial power and what people can achieve in this life. And it's great to come to a place which focuses on beyond this life. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus said, he said, out of the heart of people comes evil thoughts, greed. His favour rests. That was the problem they had in the first century in Jesus' day as well. Everyone was pointing the finger at the tax collectors. We do need to address issues there, but we need to point the finger at ourselves as well and say, what's in my own heart? And what about my own greed, my own coveting? And Jesus has come to deal with me as well. That last hymn was by the Scottish theologian John Bell. Over the years, he's written and composed many hymns and songs, and we caught up with him at Crosshouse Parish Church in Ayrshire, where he shares with us his passion for singing worship. Holy, 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 God of power and might. Holy, holy, ho oh, it's your turn. I, I, I do it, then you do it back, okay? <laughs> Holy, 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 God of power and might. When I uh, work with congregations or conferences, my main thing is to encourage people to believe that they can sing. And I think that in our culture at the moment, that's something which people have given up on. Apart from football matches, people don't really sing very much. Be still and know that I am... Singing is a fairly unique thing in that it involves the body and the mind and the heart and the soul. You know, you physically produce sound, you think about what you're singing, you might feel what you're singing, and particularly within a context of worship, it um, has an effect on your faith. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. It's a thing which everybody can do. You know, we can't all speak together. If you try to read the Bible, you have 60 people, they don't all manage at the same time, but we can all sing together. So it's a communal activity. And, and it's important because what you sing is what you end up believing. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I'm convinced that when people sing something which speaks of God to them or of them to God, then that's the moment when, when their faith is nurtured. Mm.
I'd never any designs to be a great composer, that's not my gift. But I suppose I had affection for tunes because I grew up in a family where my mother and father would sing to each other when they're doing the dishes. And singing was, a, was something which my brothers and I just naturally took to. And because I, I could read music and had an interest in music, I became a, an organist in a wee country church when I was 14. But I was twice told that I couldn't sing by two music teachers. And that put me off music um, for a long time. And it wouldn't be until my late 20s that I came back to it. So something might come into my mind, you know, when I'm out of the house, and I'll just uh, kind of la la it and la la it, and then think, oh, that's okay. And then I'll scribble it down in a wee bit of paper, and then come back and try and, you know, make sense of it uh, here in front of the piano. I don't think that, particularly in the church, we should we should sing tunes that we can't keep in our mind when we're doing the dishes or having a shower. It has to have language which is fresh. And it has to be worth offering to God, because ultimately, you know, when you sing a hymn, that's who it's offered to. And you don't want to give God a kind of second rate, badly wrapped present. You want something which is which is worthwhile and which which is treasured. Mm -hmm.